Hi, this is Peter from Side Effects, and today we're going to be talking about the Feather template from ShapeNode. So what we're going to look at here is a few of the inputs that we can use, uh, how the Feather Shape Organize uh, gathers those together, and how the Feather template from ShapeNode will actually turn those curves into a uh, condensed feather that we can use in our traditional grooming workflows. So uh, the first of all, let's look at these curves. So we only have a few curves here. Uh, three is what you would need normally to create a feather. Uh, one uh, uh, spline actually creates the shaft of the feather. Uh, and then two of these outer shapes here uh, actually define where the barbs will extend to. And you'll see that in a second when the feather template from shape actually draws those barbs. So what we do is we put this into the first node of the feather shape organize. Right now these are turned off, so you'll see in a few minutes how these work here. But the feather shape organize makes sure that these are grouped together properly, that the correct attributes are put on these, um, and that they're named properly as well uh, based on what we might be bringing in from different points and things like that. Uh, but for right now we'll just look at look at the parameters and how this works. So. We have normalized checked on here for the feather template from shape. What that means is it'll make it uh, make sure that this is uh, aligned straight along the uh, the main uh, axis here in the uh, in the x or sorry in the z axis, and then uh, also that it's zero to one length. And uh, we can also move it to the origin to make sure that the root of this feather shaft uh, is right at the origin. Um, however, in this case, these this feather was drawn uh, in that position. So while those points are moving very very slightly. Um, you really can't see any major changes happening. So let's look at the shaft and how we can adjust the width of that. So what we can do is we can um, extend the width of the root of the shaft, and you can see that growing there. And we can also reduce the width here of the tip, and we can see what happens. So now these barbs that are being drawn on the GPU that are not actual geometry are coming off of this shaft. They're inheriting the width here, and they're drawing out at that same width. You can see as we get down to the end here, um, these, these barbs are increasingly thin uh, matching the center spine uh, center shaft of the feather so in this case um, I should just mention that if you are not seeing uh, these at these barb curves um, that are being drawn on the GPU what you need to do is go up to the geometry node here and make sure shade open curves and viewport is turned on it's really important for this workflow uh, to be able to be visualized properly so I'm going to reset this back to where it was before which was 005 Oops. And so let's take a look at uh, some more of these properties. So what we can do is we can set the first profile from shape. So what this is saying is use these shape curves here and use those to set the actual first shape of this curve. So what we can, so if we turn this off, we can see that this is now straight. We're not really getting any uh, bending action here. Um, but when we turn this on, we can see that there's kind of this nice bending action to the to the barbs coming off of uh, off of the center uh, shaft. And what we can do as well is we can tell it where it should start on the shape. So we can adjust this here. We can make it go further. So we can have this barb extend all the way here to this uh, further part along the curve. You can see here that that's where the curve is going. Or we can pull it further back so it starts even earlier um, on this on this shape curve here. So um, I'll just set that back to default, and we'll kind of continue on and look at how these uh, can be adjusted some more. So we can also adjust the resolution uh, of the shaft. And so what this is, uh, what this curve tells us is that um, there's one um, segment that's basically defining the shaft here, the root of this shaft. Then there's a bunch of segments uh, up here that define the actual um, barb placement on the feather. So what we can do is we can change the density of the shaft uh, at the root here. We can see that that'll go up or down depending on this property. I'm just going to reset that back to default. Um, reset that back to one. And then here we can adjust the barb density. And you'll see that this will get denser and denser until it's basically completely filled out at this point. Um, at this point, we have about 330 points. Um, makes it a little hard to see, so we'll set this back to 150. And then we can also adjust the segments on these, these kind of drawn uh, barbs. So what we can do is we can up this and it'll become more and more smooth. And what we're actually doing there is adjusting the attributes that are being saved on these individual points. So what, we're have, what we have here is we have the position of our barbs and we have these, um, these attributes that are setting positions uh, that the GPU is then reading and drawing those curves uh, based on the, the attributes that live on each of these points here. So that's how that's, that's working and we're basically telling it to write more or less attributes 
de depending on the number of segments we want to draw. Now, another thing that you can do on this node is set the name of it. So we could set this to be called uh, wing 01, for example. And we'll see that as we go in here into our uh, primitive uh, part of our geometry spreadsheet, we can see that now the name is wing 01. Um, we can, if we turn this off, it's just named feather zero. The other thing we can do is we can set which side maybe of the body to pay, you know, depending on symmetry and things like that, that this is going to go on to. So there you can set this to right, left or center, and it'll add this uh, right, left, center attribute. So those are two things that you can add as well. Um, but we can also define some of these things in another way. And let's take a look at some of these other inputs that'll go into this feather shape organize and then drive the feather template from shape. So let's take a look at profile curves. So what we can do here is we can draw a number of curves uh, that'll define some more um, details on these curves, like for example, how they curve upwards or how they split apart. So if we enable these profile curves here, so I'll enable these, we take a look down here, we can see now that um, these curves are actually driving uh, some more attributes of this feather, some more details of this feather. So we've got some curvature going on here where these are kind of lifting up from, from the plane that they were drawn on, also adding a split in here. So anything that you might want to do um, beyond just the default feather template from shape uh, can be kind of drawn by these profile curves and give, um, give some artist control to how these are being built. Now, the last thing uh, that we're going to look at here are these label points, and this is a little bit more of a technical thing that if you wanted to uh, be producing these uh, in more of a procedural manner, um, you can get naming and things like that from these points. So this last input allows us to get uh, points that will be input into the feather shape uh, organized node. So here we only have one point. It's not really a very uh, extreme case, but um, you can see here that we have a name point zero on this. And what, what this will do is um, it'll pick up the name of this point and it will apply that to the feather template shape. So if we come down here and look now, now you can see that we have point zero as the name of it. If we turn this off and come back here, we'll see that it's now called feather zero. And if we were to have this on and have the name on, this will override it as well. So that is something that you can use if needed. However, um, it isn't something that's necessary and really the only necessary thing coming into this feather shape organize is the first uh, node here or the first input here which will then uh, drive the shape of that feather created. So that's a look at how the feather template from shape node works um, and hopefully this will get you um, able to be able to use this node uh, in a more effective way in your workflows. Thanks for watching.